In this brief video, I'll demonstrate how to utilize rubrics in grading assignments in Moodle 2.6 or e-learning here at Cairn University. Rubrics can be utilized as an attempt to communicate expectations of quality around the task. The rubrics can provide a basis for self-evaluation, reflection, and peer review. It is aimed at accurate and fair assessment fostering understanding and indicating a way to proceed with subsequent learning and teaching. So basically, and I'm not going to get into the science of it and all that type of stuff, rubrics can help both the student and the instructor. The student will be able to get a better understanding as to what's required in completing an assignment or a research project. And then also the instructor can utilize the same rubric to grade that assignment and provide fair feedback and also a fair grade for the student. There are many resources out there on, on utilizing rubrics and uh, one of the better ones that I have come across is this site by Kathy Schrock, The Guide to Everything. And feel free to check this for yourself and this is the URL for this site. So if we scroll down here, we can go under assessment and rubrics. And this has a lot of different samples of rubrics that can be utilized for various applications. The research paper grading rubric. So the question is how do we create an assignment? You'd create the assignment very similar to what you do for other assignments in your course. This would be a standard assignment. So we click on add an activity or a resource. Then we click on assignment. Then we click on add. It's here in the bottom. Give a name to the assignment. A description. And the description could be, of course, as necessary and as complete as best as you can. And then scroll all the way to the bottom. And under grade here, this is where you can specify whether how you're going to grade this. This is where you specify or you tell the system that you're going to be utilizing a rubric for this assignment. So under grading method, you'd click on the drop down here and the standard is to grade it against 100 points and so on and a simple direct grading that's referred to as simple direct grading. But in this case, we want to use a rubric. So we click on the drop down and then we choose rubric. Then click on save and display. This is at this point where you can define the rubric that you want to use. Now there is a way that we can define system-wide rubrics, but those have to be probably be uh, department-based and they have to be done on our end on the IT side of things. And as the instructor, you have to define a rubric for every single assignment. So to define a rubric, you just click on define new rubric from scratch, or you could utilize one from the template. From the template, there are a few already here. All you'd have to do is just click on choose or use this template. Let's go back. So for the purpose of demonstration here, I want to show how to create a new one from scratch. So you'd click on define a new rubric, give it a name, some kind of description, and then this is where you'd add the criteria for the rubric. So the criteria would be basically just like in your assignment, you say that you have to write an assignment with 10 pages and then utilize the MLA style or APA style and have so many references. Each one of those criteria can be added in the column on the left. Now the columns or the boxes on the right, the, this is where you state how each one of those criteria is accomplished. For example, the let's say the introduction. You're going to grade the student on how they completed the introduction for their research paper. So one of the criteria is introduction. And then the introduction could have a description. So there are different types of introductions there. It could be unacceptable below standards. And then you could have an explanation such as this. It's below standards. It does not adequately convey topic, does not describe subtopics, and so on. Then another level for the same thing for the introduction could be that it is acceptable, that it meets the standards. And you could have some kind of explanation similar to this. It conveys the topic but does not but not the key questions and so on. And they could get let's say two points for that but zero points for the first one. And at the third level of evaluating just the introduction here, the criteria, it would be it's good. It occasionally exceeds the expectations or requirements. And then again you could have some kind of description. 
and that let's say would be five points and then you can even add additional levels here so you could say and it exceeds the standards and also have a description so in this case they'll get let's say eight points so so far uh, so far we are looking at only one of the criteria. it could be that it's we are looking at only the introduction or the assignment now like we mentioned it could be other criteria so such as for example the support did the student utilize sufficient resources to support their research so in this case we click on add a criteria and we put support here so this is again our main criteria and then we could put some kind of description here that such as this the next level acceptable another criteria could be grammar and mechanics and again you add the different descriptions for each section here like we did for the other ones it may seem time consuming when you first design this however this is very effective and very powerful for your assignments and of course you could have uh, again like I mentioned earlier you could have additional criteria for example you could even have one professionalism or did the student demonstrate that they understand the concept yes or no and so on so it doesn't necessarily have to be that everything has to be stated in such a way as this however you could have them simpler like I showed you here in, in this last row you can change those points so that different criteria in your paper or requirements in your paper they could have less value so basically at this time we are ready to save this rubric again keep in mind that the rubric is defined per assignment now click on save and make it ready and the advantage of this is that the student goes into the course page clicks on the research paper, sees what the description is or what the requirements are. It's also best here to actually write see the rubric below for additional requirements for this assignment. So it's best to include that in the description. And then the student can see what's going to be required for this assignment or what you're going to look at for the assignment when you grade it. And you're going to look at the introduction. The introduction has to meet this standard and this and so on. You're going to look at the supporting documents or documentation for the research. You're going to look at the grammar and demonstration of learned concepts and so on. If you had to change something or to change one of those criteria and add an additional one, here's where you change it under administration here on the right hand side. You click on advanced grading and then you choose define rubric. Under define rubric, it will present you the existing rubric that you had chosen and you can add additional criteria as long as is before the due date for the student or before you have presented it for the student so you could have submission of work you can assign at different points now the way the grading works is that when you go and grade this you'll have all these boxes so the uh, it's going to be a criteria i didn't want it as a draft here so let's click on save save and make it ready and let's go back to the assignment so here is our assignment and here is our rubric with the new criteria that we added by the way this is the actual view that the student sees when they look at this research paper and they will be able to add the submission the student uploads their assignment once the assignment is uploaded at this point it is ready to be graded by the instructor so at this point I'll show you how you can grade this assignment from the instructor's point of view again so the instructor would go to the assignment from the course page click on it then it will click then the instructor will click on view grade all submissions and here we have the assignment uploaded by the student at this point the instructor will click on grade here and here is the assignment that was uploaded the instructor will download it view it evaluate it and so on and then the instructor will come here instead of putting a grade point here on the like a number like traditionally we have been doing like 90 out of 100 or 59 out of 100 or whatever the instructor will simply click on these boxes 
So if the introduction to the assignment was excellent, then the instructor will choose this and possibly put some comments here. If the student provided sufficient support and it was good, then you choose this option. Grammar, let's say it was excellent. Demonstration of concepts and whether the assignment was submitted on time. Down here under feedback comments, this is where you can include additional comments. And then you can also have something very similar to this. So see your rubric for more information. The student will be able to see additional comments when they click on the paper. And then if you had made additional comments on the actual research paper, you could upload the paper back to the student over here under the feedback files. And I'm not getting into that at this point. And then you'll simply click on save changes and the assignment has been graded. Now from the student's view, here is what it would look like. The student has submitted the assignment. Let's assume they logged in. It shows that the assignment has been graded. It shows up here as to what the criteria was. And then further under the feedback, it uh, shows the student your comments as well as what they missed in the assignment and also what grade they got in this assignment. So basically what the system does is that it takes these criteria and the options within the criteria, and then depending on what you selected, it tabulates the grade on that basis on a number of other total options and the values for each option. So that's how you can utilize rubrics in assignments, in grading assignments, and this method provides additional information for the student as to what's required for the assignment, and they're not in the dark as to what they have to accomplish, and also it provides more fairness in what the student missed and what they did in an excellent way and it advances learning now for existing i'll uh, demonstrate one more thing here for existing assignments because the question might be i have an existing assignment how do i add a rubric to it uh, the way to do that is uh, that you go under the existing assignment like this research paper we click on edit and then we choose edit settings under edit settings you go under grade and you tell the system that instead of a simple direct grading method you're going to be using a rubric and then click on save and display under save and display notice at this point you're presented with a way to define the new rubric or to utilize an existing template that is system wide to define the rubric click on it and then basically perform the same steps that i demonstrated earlier in this video. And that's it. It's actually shorter than the length of this video to do to perform these steps, but it's a very powerful tool and it enhances learning.